Hey, this is Sasha. Thanks for joining me here for another episode. Today, I'm going to share with you how to build a $10,000 options portfolio. So again, if you're just starting out brand new to options, check out some of the other option videos or even check out one of the courses we have available. But with that being said, let's take a look, let's get started and let's build out and craft a portfolio using $10,000 with options. Stay tuned. All right, so I think a lot of people that get into trading options, they just kind of have a hit and miss approach. Hey, I'll buy a call, I'll buy a put, stocks going up, buy a call, stocks going down, buy a put. And it's not really the right approach to trading options because you got to think about things like a portfolio, right? You want to have a nice solid base and foundations. The get rich quick scheme and concept sounds all really nice because if you, hey, Let me go ahead and make $300 today, $500 tomorrow, $700 there, lose a thousand the next day. And all that is just fluctuating, but it's not really a systemic, systematic approach to really making it work for you. So here, let's start building out a portfolio when it comes to trading options. How would I go about doing that? Let's do that and find out. So, hey, if I'm starting out and I want to build a $10,000 options portfolio, I probably want to pick a few vehicles or a few areas that I want to invest in. Okay, so I need a few things. And I always like to give this example here in my uh, uh, idea concept of a portfolio. So here, this will be a long term, this will be medium term, and this will be kind of short term trade. So if I'm looking to break these things down, this will be my long term investments. This is the medium term. Um, So think of it like 30 to 60 day uh, trades. And this could be like a speculative, like a 14 day or less option contracts. And these are probably, you know, long term. Think of it like uh, long delta or just like uh, holding long stock or long duration. Okay. So those are that portfolio. So that's how I want to break it down. If I got $10,000, I probably want to put about half into this. Okay. Um, And again, you leave some for a reserve. In this case, I'm just going to say about $10,000. So let's say here, I want to probably use about um, $4,500 here to about $5,000 because that would be about half. That's about 50%. Uh, Then for my medium term, I probably want about three or four thousand, call it, uh, let's say three and a half thousand dollars there and the remaining amount um, for spec trades. Okay. So that's kind of my portfolio allocation. So now we got to figure out, okay, well, what vehicles do I want to trade this in? And typically for long-term duration or portfolio, you know, you want things like probably a Microsoft, uh, could be like a McDonald's, could be a PNG, uh, could be a Johnson and Johnson, any kind of those kinds of stocks that pay dividends, same kind of thing that you would if you were to buy regular stock. Medium term uh, could be like um, SPX or RUT is pretty good. You don't have to worry about earnings. And 14 day, again, this could be a speculative thing. Uh, Could be something like Amazon, maybe a Tesla or something else maybe that you find. So let's kind of build this out and craft our portfolio. And I probably don't want to do more than uh, five positions max. Cause once you get into five positions or more than five positions, it starts becoming too much. So I might just do this based on capital. Uh, so, you know, I might only just have three positions, uh, maybe even like four positions uh, just to balance a couple things out on the long term s- scale or maybe the medium term scale and maybe one speculative play. But let's take a look here on screen and kind of start building out a, uh, portfolio. So, Let's go here to the corner. And of course, if you're brand new, don't forget to hit subscribe. Okay, so I'm going to start crafting things out. And if you have an idea in mind already for what it is that you want to go ahead and do the long portfolio, then you go ahead and uh, use or trade those things. If not, you could do some research on, you know, dividend stocks or those kinds of things. I mean, there's tons of them out there like... uh, uh, P&G, there's uh, Microsoft, there's um, even Apple now pays a dividend, not a huge one, but it does. Um, so you could go ahead and craft those out. I'm going to go ahead and go with, uh, let's just say a uh, Microsoft, just because I like it. And what we could do is, there's two approaches to doing this. Number one, I could go ahead and do something like a diagonal and do it every single month. 
or I could go out further in duration and just kind of hold on to it. So um, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of go 70 days out and I'll just do that duration um, every one or two months. So why does this work? Uh, well, ultimately the whole point behind it is that anyway, if you were owning the stock, well, if the stock pulls back, well, you don't sell out of it and you still hold it on for a long period of time. And in our case here, well, within you know 60 70 days we're probably going to have a option that's expiring so in that case well we would just go ahead and reset it and the difference here is i don't have to make it or skew it as um, huge or as major so what i could do is here set up a diagonal and i'm going to go ahead 70 days is going to be the short so that'll be the 120 ish and i'm going to buy my protection uh about january 20, so that'll be 90 days out. So again, you could set up campaign calendars more advanced, but let's just keep things simple for now. Okay, so here I'm gonna go ahead and we will do, let's do the call side and let's check this out here. Okay, so if I wanna go in, I'm gonna go about 140s, 150s. So about 140s, 150s, okay analyze the trade let's float it so this is what it really looks like so think of it like a covered call strategy it looks very similar uh, to that risk profile picture and now what I can actually do is tweak this I could go ahead and hey I don't like the curvature maybe I'll tweak it like this maybe I don't like it that far uh, out so I'll bring it back in because I think maybe the market's toppy so I'll kind of do something like this so now what I'll do is bump up some of the contracts because, uh, you know, I'll, right now what we're doing is we're using only about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600 on uh, four contracts. So uh, what you can do is bump up the contracts because if we're trying to spend uh, roughly uh, about $4,500, well, maybe I'll spend 2000 on Microsoft, and maybe another 2000 somewhere else. So let's go back and check this out. So. Here, I'll bump up the contracts to about six. Let's go with six. And that gives me kind of a nice situation. And then I'll go ahead and do something else with, let's say McDonald's, very similar approach. Maybe McDonald's, I say, hey, well, I don't think it's going to go as high because it's doing the pullback. Maybe it'll stay a little stable. So what I could do is go ahead and I might only do a 36 day contract here again, but I'll just do a, again, since long portfolio, typically long delta. So what I want is either long delta or long vega. Why? Because when that pullback happens, that vega will help me out. So here I'll go to December to buying my protection. And let's go to about the 220. So let's analyze this trade. And now you can see, hey, I'm still long delta overall, right? So my delta here, if I zoom in, still got long delta okay and you can see I'm bullish on on that position if it explodes that actually might be a little bit of a problem so I could tweak it just a little bit some of these are not really traded um, so what I may need to do let's see here because we got we're going by fives here and those are by tens so I might need to go by a, by tens I could do something like this, but let's just keep it simple. Let's go here, the 220, right there, okay. And I might actually, because it's it's a flat calendar, I might just move it to the 230. And that way I'm risking a little bit less, but it's still long portfolio. So I'm that trade, it's costing me about $60 on the contracts, but I have room to run. So again, I don't want to use my full capital or anything like that, but it gives you a little bit more room. You can see, boom. Okay. So because this is possibly a losing trade, uh, meaning that the theta works a little bit against me, uh, I don't want to go too high on the contracts amount because we have, you know, two and a half thousand or so on Microsoft might do about, uh, about 500 or 700 on this. Okay. Because I, I wanna pull this off fairly soon. The other thing I could do is to change this to maybe five contracts here, analyze the trade, and maybe go to the 220. This might be the better approach, because now what I could do is do kind of more of a double calendar, 
like this and that slowly adjusts my position and even place one over here at the 215s. No, those aren't traded. Let's go to the 210s. So I'll do something a little bit more like this and you can see it's a triple calendar that's skewed and stacked. Whoa, what a position, right? So now, why would I do something like this? Well, my risk is about $1,000 between all those contracts. So I got two, uh, two contracts on the 210s, I got three contracts on the 220s, and five contracts on the 230s. So ultimately, I'm offsetting and giving myself a little bit of cushion and room to make money from the theta on the 210s, and that way it helps pay for if the stock doesn't move and I'm still long delta and if that continues to move and run up hey perfect and what I can do is profit potential wise I could make about looking at it about uh, 1200 or so dollars you could see over here about $1,200 at the max but let's just say you're aiming for about 800 700 dollars on about $900 of risk so it's pretty much a one-to-one -one return fantastic right so anyways this could be the next setup so I'm still long delta, I got really good theta, I got good vega, so what might I do next? So looking at our portfolio here, well, I wanna do a 30 to 60 day trade, which could be like an iron condor. So why did I do these, some of these are 30 or 60 days? Well, once this 30 and 60 day trade is over, I'll go ahead and put another 30 to 60 day trade again, and again, and again, and I keep doing it because I'm long the stock, just like in a regular investment account. You're just holding on to it in the same way here. It's no different. Long delta, similar concept. It's just you're also making uh, profits if that stock stands still as well. So anyway, let's get back and uh, check it. Check this out right here and get back to our next trade. So, so far, if we look at this as a portfolio basis, you can see here's our portfolio, and that means I have show all portfolio beta weighted. I got a Microsoft, there it is without it, there it is with it, and I have the McDonald's. And so far we're using about uh, 3,000 in cash. So again, it's the basic scenario. Let's go to a Microsoft uh, or um, another trade here, and that'll be the SPX. So this is my 30 to 60 day trade. Since I have a lot of a long Vega, I want to shorten that up. And to shorten that up, I might do, uh, let's just say, here, close these up. Let's say a, uh, I could do a 43 day trade right here on the weeklies. That's the SPX. I'll sell an iron condor. These are the weeklies. And let me just go back to a single symbol here. So now what I can do here is the calls Currently, the, the stock is 2946, so the calls, and I want those way out there, uh, 3120, call it 3140, and my puts probably down in the 20, 2600 or so, 2670, 2640, let's just go there and see where we're at. So now I have this SPX. I still want a little bit negative delta because remember now we're getting some negative uh, vega here um, since the other ones we have are uh, positive vega. So this will help balance things out and I'll sell a couple contracts. This will put me at about $5,000. That might be a little too much. So what I could do to compensate this is to reduce the, the strike prices a little bit by 10 and uh, reduce that by about 10. So now I'm using only about $2,600 and I think I might bump it up one more. So there we go, $3,500, about a negative 100 Vega. And now if we go ahead and do a portfolio beta weighted, you can kind of see what's going on. I have in our breakdown list, I have McDonald's, there's my contracts, I have Microsoft and I have SPX. So now, when you look at this total portfolio, that's my portfolio. It's still somewhat long delta. My Vega, when you can see it, it's only about 20, right? I'm still a little bit long delta. I'd actually prefer a little more long delta because, again, I have more of my cash and capital in the long term. Uh, but we could easily tweak that by, number one, either reducing a little bit of, of the um, SPX. Uh, so I could go ahead and trade less contracts there or skewing one leg versus the other. So I could 
you know, turn it a little bit more more bullish. But let's wait for a speculative trade because I'm going to do a little bit more of a, a bullish speculative trade, and that'll help uh, balance things out. So here we go. There's our kind of a portfolio still, you know, long delta, and the speculative trade. Let's do on Amazon here. Okay, and if we check this out. I'm going to go ahead and put a speculative trade. I'm going to go about 15 days out. I'm going to do a quick butterfly. And why would I do that or something like this? And I'll show you. Here's Amazon. And when you look at it, you can see it's trying to bounce here. I could go ahead and put on a bit of a butterfly. 15 days out, buy butterfly. You could do an iron butterfly if you want. Here's our butterfly and a single symbol float and let's rearrange and move some of these things around so here I have the lower end so let's do about 1520 this one's uh, uh, 1780 okay so now what I want to do is take into account with where I'm at so the whole point of this butterfly is is take a look at the cash and capital that I'm really using it's only about three hundred twenty dollars it's not a lot and what I want to do is it's a speculative place so I'm looking for this stock to really move. So how do I do that? Well, I go ahead and position it further out, call it 1800. This one now I'll go to about 1830 and this one may be about 30 points under that. Okay, so it'll be 1770. So now I have a little bit more of a speculative play. 1800 is pretty far out compared to where we are. So 70 points higher in the next two weeks. And it could be a little bit of a, a spec play. So the whole point is because it's directional, much more directional spec play. But I still have a little bit of negative vega, still got that delta. And you can see I'm only risking about $310. So it's not a lot of, of risk right there. And what we talked about is, uh, let's see, our total portfolio, if I look at all of these, now, and, and it's gonna be a little bit skewed or weird with this Amazon trade just because I'm in a, uh, you know, it's gonna take that, that first expiration. Um, our total portfolio risk on this will be less than $10,000. We're looking at about $6,000 on that one. So we'll bump this up to two contracts. Let's check it out without Amazon. So we're using about $6,000 on all the other trades without Amazon. I'll go ahead and maybe bump up one of these contracts on the uh, McDonald's and the Microsoft. The SPX I'll leave at three. Let's just see if we go to four where we're at. We're about $7,500. So we got about, uh, about two and a half thousand left for our Amazon trade. And if I just go to Amazon on its own, I'm using about $1,000, gives you another uh, you know, $620 and gives you a little bit more cash on the, on the side just in case things move uh, against you or you need uh, adjustments. So let's kind of leave it like that. And that's how you would build a portfolio with $10,000. Now, if you want to trade a little bit differently and you want to see these expirations maybe match up, well, you'd have to kind of go a little bit more in November or, um, or December because now the curvature starts to match up a little bit more closely because right now Amazon is skewing those things a little bit differently. So. Anyways, with that being said, that's how you would do it. That's how you would trade it. I would go with maybe more, you know, uh, October, November weeklies there and kind of leave out Amazon uh, out as you're doing these kinds of um, setups and you're looking at it because it's going to skew your, your profit picture. And you can see the majority of, of the movement still delta, long, long delta. You got kind of a neutral vega as well. And that would be building out your portfolio the smart way. So hopefully this gave you an idea and insight of how you would do it when you're building out a portfolio with $10,000. Anyways, I want to say thank you so much for joining me in this video. If you're serious about learning to trade options the right way, check out some of the video courses I have, which is a good foundation and fundamental uh, a starting point. And then, of course, you could join us in our group uh, coaching sessions, get a one-on-one -on -one coaching session or even join one of the live webinars that we have. Anyways, don't forget to join the newsletter list by clicking the link over here or visit our website at tradersfly.com. But if you just wanna hang out on YouTube, then hit the button right over here. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.